drinks we can see this. All right. So what we're doing here is we're taking a look at this from three views, from the top, from the front, and from the side. So if we recall, for whatever top view we have, we've taken the top view, we rotate it to make the solid like this. Remember that we've always taken the top view and rotated it clockwise, not counterclockwise. We rotate the top view clockwise to look at the top view like this. Now, are my numbers good on the side? I know these are random values, but we talk about this, right, when it comes to box lengths, that I said, maybe you want to change them to be more reasonable. Are the numbers good that we have right now? Should I change any of them? What are you thinking, Isaiah? Um, you, couldn't ratio. you couldn't find a okay. So I think was having trouble with a good. So you changed everything, to like made that twenty, made that forty, made that ten, like things like that, or you just went one box is ten units. Yeah. So you made this one point eight, three point six, like that. That works, but there is a ratio you could probably work with here that works decently. What do you think? For I just did for like forty three. I said it was forty. Why? Exactly. I was just rounding all of them. So what was your ratio though? What ratio did you use first? Did you do one box is 10 units? Yeah, one you, box is 10 units. You also did one box? Anyone do anything different than one box is 10 units? No? Everyone did 10 box? Yeah, I feel like there's another ratio. I'm pretty much, I've seen it, I think, if I adjust a couple numbers. Well, I, what I did is like, I just divided everything by 18, and then for 13, I just put about like 0.75-ish. I, I would agree with that. I would use 18. And the reason I'm saying 18 is, look, double 18 is 36, isn't it? So if I make 18 one box, then this is two boxes. This is, like you're saying, pretty much three quarters of a box. This, what is 27 with regards to 18? 1.5 boxes. So 18 is the number we probably want to use here. Again, though, you'll recognize that I just, I copied these images. What I was doing when I was making this for you guys, so you can practice more over the weekend, I literally went to Google and typed in 3D isometric as my search. And I had all these images pop up, and they had dimensions on them. And I purposely didn't change them because I want you guys to start thinking about numbers in your head. What numbers actually make sense. So here, if I'm going to do this, again, I'm going to say that one box is equivalent to 13 units. And again, a box I'm referring to on my grid here, right? One box here is 13 units this way. So, I'm not 13, 18, 18 units, sorry, 18 units. I got the number 13 in my head. So it makes this one box, two boxes, two boxes, one box. 1, 1 1.5, 1. Now, 43 compared to 18. 43 compared to 18. What should I consider that? What is this one going to do? What's 43 over 18 give us? Who did 18 as their box units? What did you get? 2.4. So for the sake of this, because we're using unit boxes, I'm just going to make that 2.5 for now. You see what I'm saying? I know I'm changing the dimension, but because I'm using this for my homework, I'm just going to make this one a 2.5. So if that were 2.5, what should the actual number be? Not 43. What should it be? 18 into what number gives me 2.5? 18 into what number gives me 2.5? 45. 45, right? So this is really like a 45 that I'm working with right there. Just move the screen over a second. Right a bit better. Okay, so that was really like I'm changing that to 45. And then 13, 13 we said was what would you get? Kind? Around 0.75. Okay. So that's around 0.75. And over here, 0.75. Okay. So we've got at least all of our dimensions now. So now we can start looking into this. So from the top view, I know that we took this top view, which would be here, we rotate it this way. So I'm seeing this as sliding back in there. So when I look at this dimension across the bottom, I know that I'm going to go one, one and a half, and one. All right, so I've got here what looks like three and a half units across the bottom. And how far back is this going to be? Well, I can add these up. This is going to be 6.75, the total of this. So I know that this here is going to be 6.75 coming down, and it's going to be 3.5 going across there. So again, I've already got my dimensions here, this being that, which is going to go across this way, and this depth of 6.75 going this way. I know that this top up here is the same as this bottom down here. So this is also going to be that length. Now, to start, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in one box. So let's come in one box. Then I'm going to go up one. Then I'm going to go over 1.5, back down, and then over one. There's my top view of this right here. 
And where am I getting my dimensions? Because I don't see any dimensions labeled up here at all. Where am I getting them? It's from the bottom. From the, the same, bottom. Same from the bottom. Yeah, Max. And the one here is the one there. The 1.5 is the 1.5. The one is the one right there. So I go again, one over. Then why did I go up one like this? Why did I go up one unit? How did I know that was the right dimension, Kai? Because on the top, there it goes up one, and then there's on the side. Yeah. So I'm going over, and then up one. That's this up one, which is right there. So I'm seeing that they correspond, right? Again, this is over one, up one, over 1 1.5, down one, over one. That's literally this trace right there. I'll tell you. What would you turn the figure to the right and be horizontal? If I turn this figure to the right, it would be horizontal. I agree. Remember, when we go from the orthographic to the isometric, we turn to the side, which means it's set up like this. You're going backwards. You're doing it the other way in your head right now. I think the other day you actually sketched it backwards. You and Riley sketched it the other way, which works, though. You can turn it the other direction. That's fine. It doesn't matter. I'm trying to give you a consistency, though. So when you go from the orthographic view to the isometric view, I keep telling you to turn it clockwise, right? Which is what this looks like right here. So to go back from isometric to orthographic, you should turn it counterclockwise that time. So think about going from here, I'll tell you, over to here. Okay, what it would look like. Now, after that, I know that this region here is 2, right? So I can point to it here so we can see it. This right here from, let's see, there to there, take a look, is 2. That's 2 right there, but I have to consider this piece right here. What is this 0.75? What is it? What word would I use? It's the what of this piece. It's what? There's a word for it. Maybe not with right now. I mean, with could work for sure, but a better word for it. If I were looking at the desk, or if I were looking at um, the garbage can plane, this plane, if I wanted to know the dimension of the garbage can from here to here, like between my fingers, it's hard to see where I'm pointing to. From here to here, between my fingers, that dimension is just the garbage can. It's going to be right. And you're like, oh, it's touching garbage. The thickness of this, right? The thickness. So I'm going to call that wall thickness. It's a useful phrase in engineering, wall thickness. So this thickness right here is 0.75. So I know that I'm going to come two units down from this up to here, and then another 0.75. So this top piece is going to be two boxes to there, and then another 0.75 to pretty much right there. So I'm going to drop this down to here. And on the other side, the same thing down to there. Again, I know, trust me, I know that, yes, behind it, I'm going to have some other looking shape, this other different piece here. And that's what's called a hidden line. I'm not going to get into hidden lines too much yet, but there is a hidden line back here because the bottom of this is slightly less than the top part. Right? The top part is 2.75, while the bottom is 2. So there's a hidden line that's occurring right here. There's like a dotted line there to show that there's another edge on the bottom. But we don't care about that right now. We're looking at just the top view. I then see this line here across. So let me finish this one across. All right, so I'm seeing this here. Let me draw a line across there. Then I know that I'm at this point right here. So I've done all of this top already, right? That's all done right there. So now if I drop straight down in a bird's eye view, Okay, this is what I've got right here. So if I were to look at this right now, that's what I'm looking at, right? This is the level up there. This is dropping straight down right there. This is flat right here in the front. So if I look at this from above, I can clearly see that the part that drops straight down, you don't see from a top view. You see this rectangle, which is this, and then you see this rectangle, which is this right here. So after this part, I don't really need to focus myself or think about that plane right here. That doesn't actually matter. It's this line right here that is directly below this line right here. So now I'm going to worry about this shape. And that shape is going to look very much like the one from before. So I'm going to continue down. How far down am I going to go? Let's see. I'm going to go from here 
right? Which is right, if I continue this line straight down, that's this marking right there. So I'm gonna go two units down and then another full unit, so three units down on each side. From here to here is gonna be simply two units, which makes this one unit back. So I'll go three units down, and I'm starting at a .75 mark, right? So it's a little bit funky. I gotta go down one box to here, another box to here, and then the third box down to there. So when I go three units down from this marking, it doesn't automatically line up with a grid line. It's not going to line up. Then I need to go in one box on a both ends, right? In one, in one. So let's do that. Let's move in one box. And remember, I'm at the half of the box mark. So to go one box over, I have to go halfway into the next box. And then here, I'm going to go one unit up over and then connect. So what's one unit up? Well, I'm at the 0.75 mark, so I gotta go to it there, there, and then there. Okay, so there's my shape from the top view, from the top view. Now, from the front view, from the front view, now I'm standing here, right? And I'm looking in this way, from the front view. I'm seeing from this direction. And if you remember, we did the shading of faces. The shading of faces might be useful here. It looks like this, 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 and this would be shaded. Does anyone see anything else that would be shaded here besides those? One, two, three, four. How come we're not shading anything on this side from that direction? Okay. Because we wouldn't see it if we were just looking straight, like straight on. Yeah. That would be if you took like a back view instead of a front view, right? A back view, you would see what's happening under here or behind here, but we don't see that. So we don't have to worry about it. So for those that are forgetting what I mean by shading, in case you're doing it later, you can shade, remember, everything that you would see. And that will help you to remember what is going to go on your front view that we're going to draw next. So everything in yellow needs to somehow appear on my front view. What else about my front view do I have to consider with respect to the top view? With respect to the top view, what do I have to do? Or what do I have to know about those? Comparing the front to the top. There's something important about it. Yeah? They have, the have to be aligned. The alignment matters for these. So the top view has this width right here, which is one, two, three and a half boxes. That's this right here across. So when I look at my front view now, I need to start by going three and a half boxes across for sure. And I'm going to see that line, that line, and that line, right? So one, two, that's kind of hidden back there, and three. One, one unit, one and a half units, one unit. So for the front view, I'm going to start here. There's my three and a half units. The first box, or this box here, has a height of 0.75. That's this height right here, 0.75. So I'm going to go up 0.75. Then I know that I'm going to go across again to represent the top of that shelf. And then I'm going to come straight down. But then I need to recognize that one box in, I've got a vertical line here. So I need to put a vertical line here. And then one box in over here, I've got another vertical line. Remember, this vertical line, let me point to it on the iPad so you can see it later. This vertical line right here lines up with this one right here. This line is directly behind this line when it comes to a front view. And the line that's hidden back here is directly behind this one. So I need to draw those lines. That's right here, and then this one is right here. And what do we notice? It lines up. It's not an accident that this correlates to this, and this correlates to this. Okay, these are not accidents, and if you need to, you can draw in these dotted lines to show that they line up with each other. Okay, that sometimes helps students drawing in the dotted lines. Next, I've got this view right there. Now I need this rectangle. What is that rectangle's dimension? What is that rectangle's dimension? Carlos, what do you think? 2.5 by 3.5. Yeah, and that's not obvious because it looks like when you look at it, there's no dimensions. But look, right here, this 2.5, that is this height from here to here. And this across is 3.5. So even though we may not have seen it in the diagram, maybe it's useful to label it as 2.5 by 3.5. So let's go up two and a half boxes from here. It's just gonna get messy, right? Because I'm at the 0.75 mark. So two boxes up is gonna be one, two boxes up, and then another 0.5. So 
I'm going to pretty much go to right there and then go across. So let's go ahead. Let's do this. So I'm going to go, this is one box up, two boxes up, and then another half a box will be there. And then I'll go across, and then I'll come right back down. And that's my front view. That's it for my front view. I've got nothing else. I know that there are hidden lines, and for those that want to challenge themselves, you definitely can start marking off the hidden lines if you want to. We're going to see hidden lines more when we get into CAD. Okay, so before I introduce it in CAD, I'd like to, you know, almost ignore it for now. How about the last portion, the side view, the side view. Anybody want to step me through this that knows what they should be doing at this point? Side view? What are you thinking? Ty, give me a starting point. So, um, probably the, like, the thickness of the So, that's going to be... So, are you talking about this, yeah, this, this, or this? The, uh, this one. Thick, and then how deep? And it's going to be um, two, two points on the bottom. On the bottom, right? And on here, how far? Three. Three. You see the difference there? Notice, this only go back, goes back three units. The bottom goes back 3.75 units. So when we do this one, let's start at this corner right here. Let's go back 3.75 units. One, two, three, point seven five. Let's go up 0.75 units. Then, so what I've drawn so far is this. I'll highlight it. That's back 3 units, 3.75 units, and that's up 0.75 units. So what's in yellow here is already drawn. Then I need to do this part right here. And to do this part, I need to again recognize that this is not 3.75. This is just 3 units back. We're not including this thickness. So 3 units back brings me to here. Notice they don't line up. That's not an accident. Again, that's these two parts not lining up here. Then this goes straight up, and so does this one. How far up do they go, though? How far up, based on our dimensions, do they go, actually? What do you got? Um, 2.5 and 3.25. 2.5 and 3.25. Kind of, your answer is right. 2.5 is right, for sure. 2.5 is definitely right. Where are you getting the other portion of 3.25? Um, right there. This 2.5 plus this, right? So this final height right here, Carlos, this height and everybody that's listening, right, is 3.25. But we started at a height of, what's this height right here? So we're starting at 0.75, and we have to go up to 3.25. We're actually only going up 2.5 here, and only going up 2.5 here. So it's a little bit weird, this one. So this goes up 2.5 units to there. This goes up 2.5 units from here up to 3.25. So your positions were correct in what you gave as an answer. My question, though, was how far up should we go from there? So whether you were answering from the starting point, the answer is 2.5, or from the bottom level, this is up 3.25, this is up 2.5. So I'm going to use this one next. I'll highlight it in green. So let me do this one next. That's 2.5 up. And again, I know that's 2.5 up. Well, I guess I know that, yeah. I have to assume that this thickness is also 0.75. That has not been written anywhere, right? So I'm making that assumption that that's going to be another 0.75 there. But it's got to be, actually. No, it has to be. Because this is 2.5 and this is 0.75. So these have to sum up to give you the same value as well from there to there, and this is 2.5, yeah. So that has to be 0.75, right? This is your 2.5, this has to be 0.75 for the whole thing to be 3.25, which matches up. So it's not an assumption, we just didn't label it, actually. So let's go ahead and label it or show it on the diagram now. So let me go two and a half up. So to do that, I'm gonna go one box, two boxes, and then another half a box. This one, I'm gonna go one box, two boxes, another half a box. Bear with me, I know it's not perfectly straight. God bless you. God bless you. And then the last part. How about the last part? What do I do now? Where am I going from? Somebody else that hasn't answered yet. A couple of you answered a couple of times. I appreciate it, but I want someone else. Yeah, Stefan, go ahead. Um, we're going to go down uh, by two boxes. Yeah, and I'm going to say back, how about, right? Yeah. I'm going to go back by two boxes here because I know that this goes back two boxes until it gets to here, right? 
And then we got this extra piece at the end we'll take care of. But we know we're going back two boxes for sure. So let's go back two boxes from there. So there's one box, two boxes right there back. Now how about the top though? How about from here? Olivia. Uh, yeah, 2.75, very good. Because this is two back, right? And then an additional 0.75 thickness. So we want these to line up right there. We want them to line up. So we're going 2.75 back. I should go a little bit further, really, to be careful. Then I'm going to connect these two. And is that it? Am I done? What's the last part? Oh, oh. Mary, what's the last part? I'll show you, shake your head. Yeah. And how far back does it go, Mary? Um, I can't see, but 0.75. Sorry, it goes, it goes back just one unit. That's the depth that's going back. That's what this is measuring right here. So it goes back one unit in depth, and the height is 0.75. The height or the thickness of it. So it's going to go back one full unit. And the height is physically still 0.75. Thanks for visiting. So we're going to go over an a isometric one, draw it solid, and then we're going to go to the And then going forward with classes wise, this is probably the end of our drafting stuff. They got to play as a number to keep on the catalogs. You want any it's like projects or curriculum? If you guys are setting something up, just email me. Yeah, 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 no problem. Uh, so that's what the side view is going to look like for this one. So a lengthy problem, obviously, right? This is not an easy one by any means. Not an easy type of problem here. So on your quiz when you take it next week, you can definitely expect something of this difficulty level. Maybe a little bit lighter from nice, but something that you should be able to do this for sure. Okay, I'm not going to give you something like that last one. We're going to go over that if you guys want to. It was tough. Yeah, the last one was very tough. We can go over that together. Um, but it's something that you should be able to handle, meaning this one right here. Although it does take a while, you could do a problem like this pretty easily. Okay? It takes time, it takes practice, and it takes some sort of focus when you're working through it. Um, any other of the isometric to orthographic that were tough for you? Or do we want to move? Let's move on to the solids. I think we move on to those, yeah? OK. So let's go ahead and move on. I'm going to pause this. First, A was a little bit easier. Let me start by asking this question. What values and dimensions did you use for it? Right? What values and dimensions did you use? Klein, give me what you did. Yeah, give me, so start with the top view and give me these three dimensions and then give me the height. What did you use? So the side of the left the You called that two or you called this two over here? Oops. Or you called this two. Okay, got it. And you call it all the others one? That works. Did anybody have a different set of numbers for the top view? See, this is good. Neighbor, what did you have? Well, I just did like one box is 10 units, and then uh, 15, like, the middle box like, looks a little bigger. Than it does look slightly bigger. That would be the only thing I would comment on. And I would say that the two might need to be a little bit larger than two. Yeah, I said that was four. You see what I'm saying there, proportionally? So I'm okay with whatever you did, so keep what you have, and it's fine. But proportionally speaking, if I were labeling this, this would, for me, either be a three or a four, and I'd probably either up this to two or to 1.5. Anybody use 1.5, anybody use two? I said 1.5 for the two side boxes, and then two for the middle and then two for the middle one, so that it all worked out nicely, so it added up to an even number. That does work out nicely. Everybody see what he's saying? So neighbor chose these a little bit differently. He said, let's make this two and make these both 1.5, so that it adds up as a total value to five. Now, here's the thing. If this is five this way, then this definitely can't be two now, right? So what number should I make the height? Should I make it a three or a four? What's more reasonable, Carlos? Four. Probably the four. Okay, I would agree that the four is definitely more reasonable. So let's just label the side here a height of four. Okay? So Klein, your answer wasn't wrong, but I think that the other one was more applicable. Does that make sense? Okay, and again, it's up to you to choose. So on the quiz, I'm not going to take off points unless 
Your math doesn't make sense. That doesn't make no points. For example, for example, what should this length be here? What does it have to be, everybody? Five. Five. It's got to be five. How come? Yeah, the top width is five as well. So if on the quiz you labeled that as four, I'm definitely going to mark off for that because your numbers don't make sense then. But if it's not drawn perfectly to scale or it's not the numbers that I chose, it's not the end of the world. What else can I label? For the front view, for the front view, Max, what else? Um, on, the, on the left-hand side of the front view, it's yep. also four because the, the, the length is four on, on the... No. That's, the different, one. that's, that's different, different, one. different one, Max. Hold off on that. How about something else from the top to front view, can you tell me? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, good. Uh, the 1.5 that's used on the top is the same as I do there. And then? And then uh, going down is, is also 2. But is it going down, really? Or, like... Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So the slanted portion has a horizontal length of 2. The slanted length is not 2. It is far greater than 2. Think about a right triangle, right? A right triangle, this would be your hypotenuse here. So that's definitely more than 2. Agreed so far. Next, can I label anything else based on the top? Nothing else from the top is useful at this point. Nothing else from the top is useful. So I should start labeling other things on my front or on my side? Side. Side? OK. I'm with you. Side, what numbers do we want to use for the side? We have this height, and we have this height, and then we have this depth. What are you thinking? One and three, that would make that side length. So you're saying if you made that a one and that a three, I'll tell you? Yeah, because that's add up to four. It doesn't have to add up to four, though. We've got to get over that. It does not have to add up to four. Be careful. That was what somebody else said before. Max said that earlier. It doesn't have to add up to four there. Careful. Elizabeth? I mean, I had different um, numbers, but I had three on the side. So you had? And sides. On the side. And so how did you make the split? Ah, I see. Okay. So your number's a little bit different. My point is this. Look, this height, remember, is the height of the solid. It's not the same as the depth. This 4, we take the top and turn it. 4 is how deep it goes. The height is this high. So we have not come up with a number for this yet, nor have we come up for these numbers. We do have this number, though. What is this number that I'm pointing to right here? What value, Mary, is that? This is 4. And whether you realize it or not, it's the same as this. Think about it. Right, if I were drawing the top, I'm gonna to sketch real quick, I know it's not perfect. That's what my top, like say, looks like. And then the side view is there. Well, that four is the same as that four. That's this four, and that's that four right there. Okay, that's, that's what Mary's talking about right there. So I'm gonna erase that, because that is ugly. Okay, and I'm gonna put this four right there. So again, the width of the side view is the same as the height of the top view. They're both the depth of the object is what they are. They're both the depth of the object. What else? What else? So I have the four, right? That's great. But I need numbers that are reasonable for these. So let's use something that's reasonable scale-wise. So here, I'll use my hand. Oh, look at that. Stretching my hand from thumb to middle finger is four, right? This is a good way of using scales. Use your pencil to help yourself. If I stretch this from thumb to middle finger, it's the same, isn't it? So what was the number we suggested earlier? Who suggested 3 and 1? I'll tell you. Looks like 3 and 1 probably work here, or maybe 2.5 and 1.5. But altogether, it looks like this being 4 is pretty much the same as this being 4. You see how I'm using my hand as a measurement tool right now? OK, you can do it with your finger as well. If you're on the paper and you're putting your finger up to the paper, from like the tip of your finger to your knuckle might be some length. Well, then you can turn your finger and use it proportionally. You should be able to gauge estimates of dimensions based on using other things. So if I'm like at home and I'm measuring something in my apartment and I want to know that, you know, I need to know if there's enough clearance and I don't have a ruler or a tape measure, I do, but say I did it hypothetically, I might pick up a pencil, right? And be like, you know what? Okay, this is the function here to here. Okay, so I know that the thickness of this paneling is this far, and I can physically mark it off on a pencil. So a measurement tool can be anything. I'm using my fingers as a measurement tool by literally like stretching my hand as far as I can. 
Okay? The point is that this is definitely going to be 4 as a height, so let's label the 4 over there. Now, the question then becomes, is this 3 and 1? It's not, we know it's not what? What is it definitely not? It's not what? 2 and 2. Why is it not 2 and 2? Yeah, they're not equal in height easily. We can see that. So it's either going to be 3 and 1 or 2.5 and 1.5 at this point. We're doing one or the other. I'm going to do 3 and 1. I know it's not perfect, but it just makes it easier to sketch later. So I'm going to choose 3 and 1. Okay. I know it's not. It's probably closer to 2.5 and 1.5. Now, as I go to start sketching this, I want to think about where do I start. Tell me, where do I start? Where do I start my sketch? Where do I start my sketch? What? Somewhere. Yeah. Did you say anywhere, right? Yeah, literally anywhere. Anywhere on this page I can start it. Now, depending upon what sketch portion I'm doing, it makes sense. Like if I'm starting in the front, I might want to have the front here and show the depth going back. So I might start at this corner here. But if I'm starting from this corner, I might start it here. If I'm starting from this corner, I might start it up here. You see what I'm saying? So that it fits on my grid. But it doesn't matter where I start. But I have to know physically where I'm at with regards to my sketch. Should I do the top, the front, or the side first? Top, front, or side? I like to start with top view. Okay, I do like to start with top view. Here, we're going to notice, though, that top view is going to get a bit tough. So front view might actually be better. But I'm going to start with top on purpose to show that it doesn't matter which way you start. So starting with top view, I'm going to start right here. I'm going to put a dot. That's my starting point. And that dot is going to represent this corner right here. Some people like to do this, and they put SP, starting point, and then they label it on their diagram. It's a technique I've seen. I don't personally instruct it this way, but if it helps you, maybe it's useful. That corner is that dot right there. It's where these two corners match up. Now, from the top view, I know I go four units back. So let's go four units back. And there I'm at, four units back. So what line did I just draw? What line did I just draw? Help me out, come on. Some of you are not really paying attention. I hope you're doing other things on your iPad, but you're not even looking up. I mean, I should see people looking up. Bronwyn, go ahead. Like the line that's the Very good. The vertical line extending upward from the starting point. Good description. So I've drawn that line to start. What next? What next about the top view? Emily. Horizontal line, the upper left corner, horizontal to the right. Emily, how long should that line be? Uh, three, 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 five. Say again? Five. five. Yeah, good. You, do, you did the math. Yeah, good. So five units across. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and draw that. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. Okay, again, so what have I drawn so far? We can highlight it. Or I'll use the cursor. We've drawn this. And then this. Again, back four units, across five units. So far, so good? Next, what should I do? You go um, four down from the top right. All right. And then finally, keep going, Elizabeth. And then uh, five left. Okay, so there's my top view. Have I drawn my rectangles? Not yet, but I will. I need to go a unit and a half over to here and a unit and a half over to here. So I'm going to mark that off. That's pretty much right there and right there. So let's go ahead and do that. So those are the two spots I'm going to focus on. I'm going to go directly across. And I'm going to go directly across. So this is where my top view gets to be a little bit funky I was talking about. Because now, if I look at the front view, I can clearly see that that top view is not correct, right? Everybody see what I'm saying right now? Think about it logically. The drawing I've drawn so far is to show the top portion. But by looking at the front view, I can see that the front view has this different shape to it. So because the front view has this different shape to it, I know that there's going to be this missing region right here. Right? This missing portion is not going to be here. So to me, there's no way that this is going to exist right here. So something's going to have to give and change in a little bit. We'll see that. But we don't see it yet visually. We can't see it. So let's move on to the front view next. In the front view. Mark, tell me what you should do from the front view. Give me a, give me a piece I should go with. Yeah. 
what I do or what should what I should do here. So let, let's start here, Mark, and tell me what I should do from the front. Yeah, well, first go down four. Four units down, I agree. One, two, three, four. Agreed. And then? And then you go five to the right hand. Good. One, two, three, four, five over. I agree. And then Keep going. About, about three up. Uh, not about, but exactly. exactly. Very good. This is three. And we know that that's three because we label it on the side view. One, two, three units up. Keep going, Mark. You go 1.5 to the left. Good. So from here, let's go 1.5 units left. Good. And then what's the last part? And then from, um, from that first little rectangle uh, all the way up, yeah, up there, that, that point on the bottom right, you go down, go down two from that to connect with the other. So take a look what Mark's talking about. Connect these two here is the slanted height. I would agree with him. So look at the front view and look at the top view. They clearly don't agree, right? It's obvious that the top and the front don't agree. This looks to me right now like, uh, what I used in that class. Ever play Hungry Hungry Hippos? No. Yeah. No one's ever played that? I've played Hungry Hungry Hippos. Right? Remember the hippo like comes out to bite and stuff? It's like the hippo's face is kind of like... Kind of, like a little top flap. But this top flap doesn't exist. It's not there because we can clearly see it's not there, right? Look, this is nothing here. There's no part there physically. So that top flap doesn't exist. So we're going to have to edit that clearly. Let's move on to the side, though, before we go any further. The side has a depth of four units. So I need to go back four units. And that's going to line up with directly above it. So let's do that. Let's go back four units. One, two, three, four units back. Then the side view also goes four units back here. And then I'm going to connect these two. So look at this rectangle I just drew on the side view. This is a four by three rectangle. It is four units deep and three units tall. Four units deep, three units tall. So how is this top view going to work with what I've got here? Because it looks like, right, according to this, it looks like there's another rectangle that's four by one. Everybody see this? It's four by one? Well, look, four by one. So do I just make a rectangle there? Is that it? Finish this off with a rectangle right here? No. It wouldn't be logical. Let me, let me do it. I'm going to do it even though it's not right. If I did that, that's clearly not correct, right? Because look at the front view. The front view tells me that there's nothing in this region at all, yet my illustration shows all this stuff happening in this region. So what should I do with all this stuff happening in this region? What should I do with it, Katie? Um, just like move it down. Katie, right? Yeah. That's right. Move it down and like erase it so it's like a slanted edge. Very good, Katie. I need to get rid of this. And it's going to be moved down. It's going to be slanted. So let me erase part of this. I'm hoping that I realize I did this with this program. It doesn't allow me to erase stuff. Yes, I forgot about that. Wonderful. OK, bear with me for a second. Um, <laughs> shoot. Uh, in Notability, I can erase stuff. And here, I can't erase certain things. I don't know why that is. It's after you click off that it doesn't. I can, erase, I can probably erase the most recent line. Yeah, look, I can erase the stuff that I just drew. But I can't erase the actual image up here. Ah. I guess I could, yeah. Oh, my God. Let me, uh, I got it. I got it. Here. I know what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll, I'll troubleshoot. You can already see the answer here listed, right? And we use different dimensions, actually. No, that's not even right. Never mind. Oh, that's annoying. All right, so I'm going to redraw it, I guess. I'm going to have to. Give me a second. It'll take me like a minute just to redraw this real quick. Okay, give me a second. So we're starting here. What are my dimensions? Four down. One, two, three, four. Five. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
This is going to be 1.5. This is going back for. This is going over 1.5. And these two are connected. Okay, we're kind of there. So I kind of erased what was on that, this region over here, this image. And I have to recognize that this slant right here is this slant right here, which is really this rectangle right here. Remember, looking in at this slant from that perspective, you're going to see just this rectangle looking shape. That's what we're seeing here. So this slant is represented by that rectangle. So what I can do is, I can go back four units. One, two, three, four. Connect that. Go back four boxes here. One, two, three, four. Connect those. Let's see, am I right? One unit, two units, three units, four units. And then connect that part right there. So this looks kind of funky, but this is the right view of it. Here's the front right there. From the top, we're going to see one, two, three rectangles. From the side, we're going to see one, two rectangles. Remember, these are only visible from the top because they're flat. They're not angled. This one is angled, which is why we can see it from the side, and we can see this one from the side. So sick. Okay? That's what it ends up looking like. That's the general shape of what we're getting here. Any questions on this one? Anything about this that was really difficult? Go ahead, Stefan. Meaning this, right? Yeah. yeah, so that's actually this right here. Oh, right. I know, it's kind of weird, right? Why is it one and like on there, it's like, uh, on this slant, it's like um, two or two? Yeah, that's a great question. So, Stefan, this one represents the height of this. And take a look. This from here, if you look from here, follow this line along, right? That's the actual height. And that height is one unit up. This length right here is this length right here, which we don't know. It's a hypotenuse, right? Make, make, complete a triangle here. That's a height of one. So this is three. The whole thing is four. So this is a height of one. That's a distance of two. So this is two comma one comma square root five. This is radical five, this length. So this length, you're right, Stefan. This is not a length of one. This is a length of square root five. It's this height right here that is a height of one that we're seeing in the diagram. Okay, it's a little bit difficult to see that. But what I want you guys to recognize is that when it's slanted, it's gonna be viewable from two views. So this rectangle, let's use red, here in the middle is the same as this one here, which is really that right there. Okay, so everything with the X in it is the same exact rectangle. This is as viewed from above, this is as viewed from the side, and then this is as viewed in the isometric. Okay, but that X is all those. So for this one, for this example, I recommended that you start with top view, but really, top view didn't help too much here. So there are times where if your front view, if your front view is slanted and there's some, some interesting stuff going on, you might want to start by sketching the front view first so you have a general idea of what the shape would look like. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Okay, that applies to the next example also, which we're going to do. The next example has a front part and then a back part to it. So I would recommend for that as well, the same thing. All right, let me go to the last one then. I don't think we're going to have time to get to Ken, which is fine for today. I'd rather go over this stuff. Let's go over the last one now. Oops, let me start a new slide for this. So this one was really tricky. The reason it was really tricky, A, you were missing a lot of dimensions and a lot of things you couldn't physically read. And B, you have three slanted regions here. Everybody sees that? Yes. Three slants. One, two, three. So it's going to get a little bit funky when we look at the shape. It's going to look a little bit different. So what I would recommend, again, is considering labeling all of your dimensions. Who felt that they had success when they did this for homework? Did anyone feel success for this, honestly? Klein? 
Can I see your shape? Can you hold it up? You want to give me your dimensions? That you, did you label dimensions? Or you just did you eyeball it all? Uh, the top, I put dimensions, and the rest was like eyeball. What did you use for the top, Klein? So, the top top or the no, bottom the top? Like, like that or like that? The first rectangle, the side was two, and then the second rectangle, the side was one. So this rectangle, got it. This side is going to be, two. and then this side is going to be. They do, but I couldn't read it, so I didn't know what you used. What did you use for this? What, can you guys read that? I don't even... It says two and a quarter. It says two and a quarter or two and a half, something like that? Two and a half? All right. That works. So 2.5, which makes that 1.5, because the total is four, um, which makes this little piece here 0 0.5 right there. See the 0 0.5 I threw in there? All right, that little gap right there. How about the vertical? Vertical from that? I mean, I know it's given in the other one. It doesn't matter, anybody. It's given in the side, but we can change those numbers. What did you use for your vertical dimensions there? So you used what was written here, Riley, as the one and three quarters? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just make it simpler for the sake of this, okay? So I'm going to make the entire length here, that entire length, and make that two. Um, and I'm going to make this, hmm, see that's where it's going to be a problem, huh? It's not, one is not reasonable because it's not the same as the front part. 1.5 is not really reasonable either because it's not a square in the top right. So that should be a little bit less than 1.5. So let's use 1.25, ah, oh, this is going to be messy now. I'm just going to, for the sake of this, I'm going to just use 1 and 1. I know it's not, I'm just going to use 1 and 1. So those are my dimensions for the top, for the top. This is still a two right here, it's given us two. For the front now, we have to make sure that they correspond appropriately. So if I made this depth two, this number here is gonna be two. I made this a one a minute ago, that's gonna be a one. And again, where are they coming from? This two right here is this full length two, the depth. Remember, how far back it goes is the same here. This one right here is this one right here, which also makes this a one also. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, what about these heights and these other dimensions here? We know this is going to be 2.5, which it's labeled as. I'm just going to write it bigger so we can see it. We know that this is going to be 2. That's a length of 2. How do I know that's a 2? That's a 2 because that's a 2 directly above it. Your Image labels this as one and change. I'm going to make it just two, make it easier there. And I'm going to label this as 1.5. Okay, which makes this 1.5, makes this two. Barely distinguishable or noticeable, but these are not at the same height. This right here, if I continue this line, is slightly above right here. That's this extra gap. See how this line is here? This line represents this edge, and then this line here represents this edge right here. So there is a slight difference. I'm not going to go crazy and label what that difference is for now because. This is going to be 1.5, that's going to be 0.5. I'm just going to label this whole thing as 2 and probably put these to the same height value for now. Or else it's going to get really complicated really quick. So I'm going to move that line up. I'm just going to cross it off for now. Okay? I'm going to make believe that, again, this height right here is the same as this height right there. All right, now I've got everything on here. It's going to be a bit tricky. This is another circumstance where if I start with the top, it'll work, but I'm probably going to have to do a lot of erasing, right? So what might I want to start this one with instead, if I notice that I'm having slanted parts to the top? Yeah, I would start this with the front. Again, because of all the slants that are occurring. So I know I have a height of 2 on the left side right here, so I'm going to start with a height of 2 somewhere over here. So let's go ahead and just draw a height of 2 here. Okay. 
Then I know that the distance across is going to be 4. And I know that because it's labeled up here as a 4. If that's a 4, it means that from here all the way across must also be 4. Now, I know that this front piece only comes 2 units forward. And then I know that it goes back up 1.5 unit. And then I know it reconnects back to the beginning. So what have I just drawn right there? I drew simply this shape right here. Okay? So I've taken what looks like, in this case, a trapezoid, which it is, and I've created this trapezoid on the diagram first. I did that for a reason. Anyone have any idea what reason I did that for? Yeah, so I want to show this item's depth, which I know is right here, right? Look, from the side view. This little part from the side view is really the depth. And this depth is one box. So I should go one box back from all of these. Again, I'll point to it. This right here is the depth, which is how deep this part goes, which is the same as this one right there. So I need to go back. So I'm going to go back one box from all of these. Then I'm going to connect to show depth. So that's this front piece right here. And take a look, the top view. See this right here, this rectangle I'm seeing on the top view? That rectangle is this slanted edge. And look, that rectangle is actually the same as this rectangle. They're the same. I know they look different. But this represents this top edge, which is what this represents, which is this top edge. This right here is represented right here in the front. Okay? So it's a little bit tricky so far. Now I'm going to continue, I'm going to continue with the front view. And the front view is going to get even trickier now. So I need to go back, or I need to, let's see, well here. I need to continue. I need to continue two more boxes. So here's what I want to point out. We've done this so far, up to here. I want to continue two boxes. But this shape is deeper than this shape is. So I'm going to start it here, and I'm going to go two boxes from here. Then I'm going to say to myself, OK, this has some depth to it. This depth of one right here, or this depth of one right here is showing the depth of the big piece. So let's go back one box from there. Now, what about the height for that piece? How far up should I go here? How far up should I go here for this one? Two. Where are you seeing two, Carlos? Uh, right there. Right there, right? Yeah. This height is what we're talking about, too. And again, I said it's pretty close, right? It's not two, but we're going to say it's two. So I'm going to go up two to get to this part right here in the front. So let's go two boxes up in the front there. Okay. Again, what is this <coughs> representing? This is representing this guy right here. Right there. Okay, that's what it's representing. But I have this other rectangle up here, which is really, remember this rectangle here I'm seeing is looking into the roof like that. Looking into the roof, that's what that rectangle is. So I need to start thinking to myself, how do I draw this elevation, right? How do I do this elevation? So let's ask ourselves a question. What is the full height to the top of here? What is this full height from the top straight down to the bottom? Do we have a value for that right now? Do we have a value? Mark, what are you seeing? Is it 4.5? Where's the 4.5 coming from, Mark? Uh, the, two, the two on the side and the 2.5 from the top of that side. So this 2.5, you're talking about this, right? Oh, that's, oh, never mind. That's, yeah, that's I'm trying to get this height mark right here. Yeah. Okay? So I know that this is 2. You're totally right. This part is 2. What are you thinking, Carlos? Is 3.5? Where's the 3.5 coming from? 2 plus 1.5. Where's the 1.5 coming from? That height. This? Yeah. Well, this is 1.5, and this is 2. So I can't add those two together. 
because they're on the same. I, I need to add this to whatever this is, is what I need to add. So I need to know what this height is right here. What is this height right here, though? One. Neighbor? One. Where are you getting the one from? Chef's Yeah, there's no number labeled, is my point. So this was not given. Everybody see that? The angle 30 degrees was given. So the angle could have been used if you want to do a little bit of trig. But I would just recommend that you label this as a height of one. Okay. So this box that was not labeled here, we have to label this as a height of one. That's what we ended class with. And that means that this height from here to here is also a height of one. So if I look at this, I can see that going from here going back, I'm going to have to go back one and a half boxes and up one. So let's go back one and a half to about here, and then let's go up one. So that's the point that we're going to locate on the graph right there. So let's just put a dot there for the moment. Let's go ahead and connect that to here. And let's do the same thing. Let's go back one and a half boxes. All right. From here, that's one box. That's another half. And let's go up one box, which is right there. Let's put our other dot there. And that's going to connect here. And what is that showing us? That's this line right here. Again, we're going back one and a half boxes and then up one box. That's what we just did there. Now, to connect to this last piece, we have to consider the fact that on the end here, we're going to have a slight elevation also. So we could see this as going two and a half boxes over and one box up. So if we go right from here, we'll start. This will be one two and a half boxes over and one box up, which means connect it right to there. So we're gonna connect this part right here to that top. Then we have to recognize that this still has a depth of one. So let's bring this back one further unit and then let's connect those last two. And that's what the final shape is gonna end up looking like for this.